For more on this, let's uh, bring in Nikki Haley, former ambassador to the United Nations. Uh, ambassador Haley, great to have you in studio, by the way, Thanks here in New York. Um, it is just brutal. Um, some of the reaction we're seeing from this White House on what is happening at the border, as we continue to see those live images, people pouring over the border, the inhumane conditions, your response to how the White House is handling this? I mean, the hypocrisy of Joe Biden going to the United Nations and speaking on human rights and looking at those people underneath the bridge living like that, not third world country, fourth world country, is inexcusable. And instead, they're going to talk about the horses and they're going to talk about everything else. What about the root problem? Biden has yet to be there. Kamala has yet to be there. Blinken has yet to be there. But they love to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And they love to talk around the edges. The truth is we have a real crisis on our hands. And they are absolutely tone deaf when they talk about it. And they refuse to acknowledge that it's their problem. Speaking of tone deaf, um, this was an exchange with our own Peter Ducey and Jen Psaki just a moment ago in the White House briefing room, where it appears that the White House and Jen Psaki representing the president, it appears they maintain the message that the border is closed. Watch. The issue is not about pregnant women. The issue is, is the border open or is the border closed? Because my understanding is that a lot of this is happening on this side of the border. I think you know the answer to that question, and I just conveyed clearly that we're implementing our border restrictions, including Title 42, including uh, making clear that people who are coming through irregular migration, uh, that it, this is not the time to come, uh, and they will be placed in removal proceedings. I mean, you let me know what you take away from that. I mean, the, by, the border's not closed if you're picking up Haitians and letting them fly to other parts of the country. That's an open border. They are allowing Haitians to move throughout America without COVID testing, without any sort of vetting whatsoever, and they can't say that the border is closed. The one thing I've been fascinated with the Biden administration is they honestly think if they say it, then people will believe it to be true. But you can't continue lying to the American public, and that shows in his approval rate. Especially with images like this one on your screen. Here's the New York Post cover this morning, Border Lie. Uh, the Post saying Biden said he'd deport migrants, but he is secretly letting them in. I want to now move to the U.N., uh, the Afghanistan collapse, the Taliban takeover. Um, you said this in, on, on FoxNews.com this week. Joe Biden was bold enough to go to the U.N. to lecture the world on human rights, yet he can't find the courage to call on its members to not recognize the Taliban. America looks weak and pathetic. What do you believe is going to happen with the treatment of the Taliban as it pertains to the United Nations? Will they let them in? You know, it's, first of all, it's amazing to me that he showed up and his one speech on the world stage literally was nothing. I was doing a UN event earlier today and one diplomat said it was totally vanilla. We were looking for the United States to give us direction on where they're going to go and we got nothing. And you look at what he said to not sit there and acknowledge that the Taliban should never get credibility at the UN because if they get credibility and they're acknowledged they get money and that's money that's fueling terrorists. I mean let's keep in mind they are forcing girls into marriages. They've taken them out of school. They've taken women out of governments. They're killing innocent Afghans on the street. And oh, by the way, we still have Americans that are over there. The idea that Biden didn't acknowledge any of that and the dangers of this terrorist group is unthinkable. But the second side of it is he couldn't even call China by its name. Like, it was a very weak, pathetic show. I've, for the first time, I was truly embarrassed mm. at how the world saw America. Uh, as far as the rise of ISIS-K, the FBI director, Christopher Ray had this final thought on this. We are, of course, concerned uh, that, the, uh, that there will be an opportunity for a safe haven to be recreated there, which is certainly something that we've seen in the past, uh, and allowing foreign terrorist organizations to operate more freely in the region. On the rise of ISIS-K, we are certainly concerned, said the FBI director. Where does your level of concern lie with it's, that? It's too late. They should have been concerned before now. Now what you've got is through everything with Taliban flying its flag above Afghanistan, you've given right for every terrorist group to recruit, 
to, to build on their armies and to literally go out and hurt innocent people. And this is all on Biden's back. And we have to start leading. We can't, I'm not going to just complain about everything Biden's done. I'm begging him to lead, begging him to start getting terrorism under control, begging him to have some sort of voice on Afghanistan, begging him to have a voice that has actions behind it on human rights, whether it's in China, whether it's on the border. I mean, all of these things, Americans in Afghanistan, we've lost our moral core and we have to get it back real quickly political implications 2022 uh, with Biden's sinking in the approval ratings of every day that Biden and Kamala are in office is another day that Republicans gain ground yeah. because they've just failed so miserably former UN ambassador Nikki Haley appreciate thanks so much thank you thanks for being here